Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I hope 2023 is treating you well so far. It is the start of a new year and I feel a little bit out of sorts. Like it's literally the beginning of January. Just just went back to work this morning. The boys go back to school tomorrow. So yeah, I feel a bit out of sorts. Like I'm not quite sure what day it is. I feel like I've consumed nothing but cheese and chocolate over the last week and when i say cheese and chocolate i mean i've probably consumed my body weight in cheese and chocolate and i feel like my skin is definitely paying for it now i'm coming out in a few little bumps under my skin it's not doing so good anyway we've got to put up with it i say put up with it it's not really a difficult issue to put up with is it um we've got to um i don't know how else to say it we've got to do it for a bit longer we've got to live off the leftover christmas food for a little bit longer because obviously we are moving in less than two weeks now and we just don't see the point in going food shopping when we've still got cupboards full of food so we're just gonna continue to eat what is in there for now and there's more than just cheese and chocolate like I'm being totally dramatic there's there's plenty of other food in there it's just I keep reaching for the cheese and chocolate I do still need to get a few basic things that we've run out of so we've run out of cereal which is a necessity for us because that's what the boys have for breakfast every single morning I need some cleaning spray and milk we need some more milk so I am gonna have to go down to our local shop just to pick those few bits up just until we can get to a bigger shop to stock up on the basics. Um, I'm not willing to buy too much in the shop that's down the road because it's quite expensive. Uh, put it this way, it would bankrupt me to do my weekly shop in there. So I am just going to get the bare necessities. It is currently half past seven in the morning. Avery was up quite early this morning. Um, I don't think she's too well, but I will definitely catch you up on that a little bit more later on. But for now, she's due a feed, so I'm going to go and get her fed. It is a little bit later in the morning now. I've just spent a bit of time packing up a bit of the house. But I think I'm going to get Avery dressed now and head down to the shop before her next feed. Because it's strange with Avery. Her mood seems to change between feeds. So at the moment she's been really happy and she's been letting me get on with what I need to do. Um, but who knows after her next feed. So little red dress for today. I'm trying to make the most of the red while we're still in winter because I feel like it's not so much of a spring summer color. So red for today and then I'm going to use her new little hairbrush. We've actually really been liking this. It's kind of like a tangle teaser or like a wet brush and it's been working really really well on her hair and of course it's frozen so it is perfect for Avery. So Gonna go and get her dressed. Get on there. So Josh has come down with a bit of a flu by the looks of it, and he says he's feeling the worst he's felt in a very, very long time. Which makes me a little bit nervous because there is a bit of a super flu going around at the moment. There is, isn't there? Um, I mean, I've heard some of you guys mention to me that you've been quite poorly recently and I know a lot of family members and friends have gotten ill with this flu that just doesn't seem to shift for a really, really long time and it just batters you basically. So I am a little bit apprehensive that that is what it's gonna turn into. Also, I feel like Avery is definitely getting something because she's doing this Oh, don't bite your lip, don't bite your lip. 
She's doing this really strange thing and this isn't normal for her, but we have seen it before. It's, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. When she is put down, she almost kind of straightens out her arms to her side like this but then she makes noises as though she's really scared or she's in pain, one or the other, and she just gets really, really upset and she just seems really unsettled and unnerved. And I don't know if it's pain or if it's some kind of sensory thing. I don't know what it means. Um, I really don't. And the only other time that she's done that before was right before we ended up with hospital with RSV. <coughs> I mean, she's starting to do it now. It's just, this here, it's just not like her. Normally she likes to be kind of laid down. That's her favorite way to be at the moment. But yesterday and today, she's just been like this, where she just keeps stretching out her arms like that. Almost as though, it's like she's scared, but I don't know why she would be scared. But uh, I don't know, it's the strangest thing, but I just think maybe she's getting something and that is why she's doing it. Because the last time she did it, she ended up in hospital with RSV. So I really, really hope it's not gonna be that bad this time. She is still on the prophylactic antibiotic, so hopefully that will keep anything too nasty at bay. Considering we've all been in the same house for the last week and a bit with Christmas and everything, I'm fully prepared that I'm most likely gonna catch it at some point as well, which is really annoying and it also happens to be the time that I'm supposed to be busy moving and packing and stuff, so it's gonna be quite annoying if I do get it, but I don't have a choice to be ill right now. I don't have the luxury to be ill right now. I need to just power through whatever it is if it does come to me. The boys are okay. Um, they're fine, which is odd because normally it's Eli that brings things home from school. But this time it is Josh. So I don't know. It's okay, baby. Strep A and scarlet fever are also going around here at the moment. So that is another thing that I need to kind of keep an eye out for. Um, just before Christmas, we thought that Marley might have had scarlet fever. His mum thought he might have had scarlet fever and they ended up actually taking him into hospital to get checked over. Luckily, it wasn't scarlet fever. It was just a viral infection. And um, they think that the rash was most likely caused by an allergic reaction to the ibuprofen. But I think it is just that time of year, isn't it? Everyone's gonna start coming down with something. Avery has had a really, really good stretch. I mean, she had that viral infection a couple of weeks ago, but it didn't turn out to be as bad as any of the others she's had before. And I thought that maybe that is just the antibiotic stopping it from spreading to her lungs or turning into like a bacterial infection. Another thing that has changed that I haven't filled you guys in on yet is Avery's actually started a new medicine for her dystonia. It's called levodopa and I'd not heard of it before. Um, but basically the baclofen does Avery well for her tone, but it doesn't really do anything for her dystonia. So we do still need to explore medicines with that. So we're trialing the levodopa. She's only just gone on to it. Now, the neurologist said at the appointment, this isn't a medicine that you will be able to get at your GP. You will need to order it in from the hospital. And we got sent a bottle. Um, I must have picked it up from the GP maybe, maybe the middle of December because it was sent from the hospital to our GP. And I thought I was being very clever. I decided I wasn't gonna start Avery on it until closer to the end of the festive season because what I didn't want to happen is for us to run out or for something to go wrong with the bottle and then us to struggle to get any because of everything being closed etc etc. So that is what I did. She started on it on New Year's Eve. It is currently the 3rd of January and on New Year's Day, I looked at the bottle and I noticed that the expiry date was the 4th of January, which is tomorrow. Now, that's not normal for Avery's medicines, especially one that doesn't need to be refrigerated. They normally don't have that short of a shelf life. So I was really, really shocked. So I ended up calling the hospital and this is where it's just a godsend that Avery has open, open access to the children's ward at the hospital because they're very, um, you know, open to talking to us over the phone and sorting things out if we need need them to. 
Um, so I explained the situation and they contacted the pharmacy. Uh, the pharmacy called me back yesterday and said, yes, it is a drug that only has a short shelf life because it has to be specially made. Now, the neurologist or Avery's paediatrician didn't actually mention this to us. No one mentioned that to us, so we just weren't aware of it. Because of that, because it is specially made by a particular company, it's not the easiest medicine to get hold of. So today she said she's gonna ring around some other pharmacies and see if anyone has it in stock. If they don't have it in stock, then I think the plan is to order more to be made up. But if that is the case, because we don't know how long it's going to take, we will need to just stop her on it. Luckily, we're only on the very first dose because we, we obviously need to wean her onto it. She's only on the very first dose. So she said it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't really affect her if we had to just... Oh, that's my phone. It shouldn't really affect her if we had to just stop it. So I'm just waiting for a phone call today from the pharmacist to see if she's either managed to get some. And in that case, hopefully we'd be able to pick it up tonight or tomorrow. Or they need to have it made up and we need to stop it until we get it sent to us. Um, and then she said, once we get this bottle sorted, we need to try and set up some kind of um system where there is some being made for her each month so there's going to be always some available for her every month now because we're moving closer to the hospital it is going to be a whole lot easier getting hold of that medicine in terms of being able to pick it up at the moment even if they do get some in we've still got to drive um to the hospital which again 30 minutes in good traffic to pick it up so it's not the most convenient of things i am a little bit frustrated that no one told us it had a short shelf life because i would have thought the fact that they sent it because they sent it to our gp just in an envelope with instructions that was it really i wish they had have said it's only got a short shelf life because if that was the case i would have ordered avery another bottle immediately so that we had a well not immediately i would have asked for another bottle to be sent out to us you know in a few weeks time just so that over the christmas period we weren't going to run out or you know we had some to move on to when that one went out of date so that was a bit of a palaver luckily it's not the end of the world like i said because she um is only on a very very small dose um it won't really affect her if we have to just stop it until we can get it sorted it would have been much worse if it was Shh. It could have been much worse if it was one of her other medicines like her seizure medicine or a baclofen or a gabapentin. The update on Avery's medicines, I can't really give you an update on how it's affecting her yet. Um, she's only been on it for a couple of days so that's really not enough time to give it to really see any difference. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm not overly hopeful just because of the experience we've had with all of the other medicines but keeping my fingers crossed. So, Fudim, shall we go for a walk? Shall we get some? Shall we get some fresh air? My sleeves have turned into um, a bib. Um, the house is in turmoil. It's not that easy to just find a bib anymore. So, I just let Avery dribble all over me, and it's fine. Can you say hello to everyone? Who's that? Can you say hello? Yeah. There's a little smile in there. There's a little smile in there. Are you being stubborn? Are you being stubborn? Can you say hello? Good girl. Hello. I see you. <laughs> oh, 
I see you. Happy girly. Oh, have you done a poo? Have you done a poo? Have you done a poo? <laughs> you have, haven't you? You've done a poo. You've done a poo. <gasps> what are you doing? <gasps> oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Gorgeous. There is nothing worse than when you lift up your child to change their nappy and you see this. This is going to be a fun nappy change. Miraculously, she managed not to poop on her tights or on her dress. It was literally just on her vest. So we've ditched the vest and I've given her a good wipe down, haven't I? You're all nice and clean now. That's the only downside. It's not really a downside, but with the prophylactic antibiotic, it makes her poo very liquidy. And that's not a terrible thing because sometimes she can suffer with constipation, which we have not had since she's been on the antibiotic. I have had people commenting about watching out for stomach issues with antibiotics. Um, don't worry, I am well aware of the kind of side effects of, anti of antibiotics in terms of bad stomach and stomach lining and whatnot. Um, this isn't a permanent solution. This is just throughout the winter, just to get her through the winter so that she doesn't get any of these really nasty bugs that have been going around. Um, I mean, there's no avoiding viral infections. Antibiotics won't stop viral infections, but what tends to happen with Avery <coughs> is she'll get a uh, viral infection and then because she's aspirating on all the extra mucus, she'll then get a chest infection or aspiration pneumonia, which is what the antibiotic will help prevent. And so far she hasn't had aspiration pneumonia since she's been on them, which has been good. Um, it just gives us a bit more peace of mind knowing that we don't have to panic every time she gets the sniffles. Um, I mean, because last time she had what we thought was a simple cold. Um, it was actually RSV, but a lot of the time RSV can go, you know, unnoticed and it just kind of feels like a cold. But Avery ended up in hospital on oxygen, so we'd like to avoid that. But yeah, we do know of the side effects and this isn't something that we're looking to do permanently. This is just through the winter as a prophylactic. Isn't it good? So we have just parted with all of Avery's kind of old packets and jars of baby food that I've been storing. Um, I had a big collection because I had started stashing things away for when we go to Orlando because at that time, I thought we were gonna be doing a blended diet in America. So I had a big bag full of stuff. Obviously that is not gonna be the case. I find it very, very unlikely that we will be going back to blended diet before Orlando, if at all, just because she seems to be doing quite well on the um, G-Tube feed. In terms of oral feeding, it's kind of just stuck where it is. Um, if we happen to be eating something and Avery looks interested, we'll let her have a little taste on her lips and we'll kind of let her take control if she wants to open her mouth and kind of, you know, really get a taste of it, she can. If she doesn't want to, then we'll take it away. I just feel like that's really the best kind of positive approach to take at the moment, considering how many kind of flops we've had with trying to get her eating orally. But anyway, that was a side tangent back to the point. Um, I put all of the food on Facebook Marketplace for free and just put on there that it was for anyone that needed it because I know times are hard at the moment and no baby should ever go hungry, should they? No, they should not. We are very, very, very fortunate. Again, we live in the UK where we have the NHS that Avery's G-Tube feed is sent to us and we don't have to pay anything for it. Obviously, you know, taxes and stuff, it does get paid for. But, um, you know, we don't have to take any money out of our income to pay for it. It is sent to us um, by the NHS. So we're very, very lucky in that sense. So I'm glad that with what food I had stored, um, I could have potentially helped a family in need, which is a very nice feeling, isn't it? Now that Avery has had her food, it's time to make the boys some lunch. By the way, yes, I am in a dressing gown <laughs> again. 
it's a little bit colder today so uh, it's also really miserable outside so i've popped on my dressing gown this by the way is the one that uh, josh bought me for christmas it is very very nice i realized that in my uh, what we got for christmas video i didn't really show this very well to you i just kind of showed it to you in its packaging but i have since got it out of its packaging and it is very very nice it's not too thick but it's still really really warm because of the type of fabric it is so yeah really really happy with it and it's keeping me toasty anyway boys lunch like i said we have a lot of chocolate and cheese in this house <laughs> and uh, other things and we're just trying to use things up basically so they haven't been having their usual kind of like sandwich and crisps for lunch they've been having um other stuff that we have so i do want to try and use up stuff that is going to go out of date soon and stuff in the fridge as well because this is the kind of stuff that i find will be a bit more difficult to move because we don't really want things out of the fridge for too long and so we have some cheese like i said and i know that this goes off on the 7th so it could do with being used We've also got some cheese here. Um, we got a lovely little food hamper from uh, my mother and father-in-law for Christmas this year. And this little cheese selection came with it. I'm not sure what the sell-by date on this one is though. 3rd of January, so that is actually today. So really, I could do with using up some of this so that it doesn't go to waste. So it's only actually the cheese that needs to be used up. So I've got two different types. I've got a red Leicester, which is already open. So I think I'll use that up. And I think this is a, a something with apricot. So me and Josh won't eat it. I know we don't like it, but the boys might. So, so I am just gonna chop up some cheese for them. And in my opinion, nothing goes better with cheese than crackers. Plenty of these still. We didn't actually get through many of these at Christmas time. And I think I bought about five packets. And some pretzels. And what's left of these chocolate raisins. And that is their lunch all done. Bit of an unconventional lunch, but I know they'll enjoy it. It's time for Avery's third feed of the day. Um, the last few hours, again, I've just been kind of flitting around, packing bits up in the house. Little lady, she's been actually really happy today. What I have noticed is normally she likes to be on the floor, but since she's been kind of doing this thing that I explained earlier, she wants to be in her bouncer more, either in her bouncer or in my arms. So that's kind of where she's gone between today. So I'm going to give her this next feed and I imagine she will probably drop off to sleep. That seems to be what's happening recently. Um, she has been refusing her sort of midday nap for quite a while now. But then what's been happening is she's tired at around three o'clock. Half three is when her feed is. So she tends to fall to sleep in my arms and... I'm okay with that to be honest because number one, it is nice to have cuddles that aren't just plagued with dystonic movements. And number two, because her, sorry that's just the feeding machine, um, because her um, nap is later, I don't particularly want her to sleep for too, too long. So if she's in my arms, I can kind of monitor how long she's kind of sleeping. And when she starts to stir, I can actually wake her up instead of letting her fall back to sleep. So it's been working fine. I do miss that midday nap, I'm not gonna lie. I miss having that little bit of time to get things done, but it's okay. When she's happy, doesn't really bother me that she hasn't gone down for a nap. It's the days when she's really cranky and just doesn't want to be put down. Those are the days that I really feel it. So today I really wanted to sit down and kind of share my goals for the new year for 2023. I'm not going to lie, I'm not overly keen on this lighting. Let's see if I, oh, let's see if I move the camera over here. Will it be better? Yeah, that's a little bit better. She's just, she's trying to reposition herself so that she can see herself in the viewfinder. So yeah, this year I made the decision not to make any New Year's resolutions, I suppose, but make goals for 2023. I feel like 
resolutions they're just notorious for not being kept aren't they and i thought if i actually plan out goals and figure out how i'm going to achieve these goals then maybe i will actually stick to them and achieve some of them by the end of 2023 so i actually wrote some down and i wrote them in my 2023 planner that i have on etsy i'm not actually sure how well you can see that but basically in the planner there is a is it going to focus there we go in the planner there is a tab that takes you to a glossary and in that glossary there is a goals page so they can be duplicated so you can have as many goal pages as you want i have two because i have a total of eight goals that i've set myself um, I will link that planner um, down below if you want to check it out. I am quite proud of it and I sell it on Etsy. But what I like about um, this particular goal planning method is I've kind of, I've got a section for the goal itself, but then I've also got a section on how I'm going to achieve it for each goal because I think it's kind of pointless having a goal if you have no clue what steps you're going to take to try and achieve it. So they're a mixture, some are for Avery and some are kind of more personal or you know for myself. So first I'm going to go through kind of the non-Avery related ones I suppose. Um, I try to be really really realistic when setting my goals this year and you know make them actual goals instead of kind of hopes or dreams or whatever I mean what I, ugh, oh I nearly choked on Avery's hair what I'd really love to write down in my goals and know I would achieve it or know that Avery would achieve it by the end of the year would be walking or talking but that is just not realistic I'm not saying it's not possible it's definitely possible but realistically with the rate of her development it isn't realistic so i have just to be mindful of the last year's experience and what we're likely to be able to achieve because i really don't want to set myself up for failure sorry i'm just gonna have to grab a spit cloth because she is soaking herself with dribble <laughs> found one so i've got it all on my phone i did um write them out on my ipad i use my little kind of ipad stylus to do a lot of my digital planning now um the first one is bake for family members birthdays so before avery was born i used to do a lot of baking i really got good at it and i was really really proud of the cakes that i used to make and decorate it got to the point where a lot of my mum's neighbours would ask me to make cakes for birthdays on the street because they liked my cakes and I made a cake for my brother-in-law's son and he really liked it. I, I got really good at it. Some people said that I could have uh, made a business out of it but I just I didn't want the pressure. I liked doing it for um, friends and family members which oddly seems to be the way all of my skill set goes with like my uh, nails and stuff i only do that for friends and family now as well i don't really make a business out of any of it um but i've completely sidetracked again um yeah i want to get back to it basically so i have set a goal for myself to make a cake for all of my close family members birthdays so the first one of the year will be Avery's and last year I did make Avery's birthday slash christening cake because we did get her christened on her birthday and it was this beautiful pink two-tiered cake and I was so so proud of it and I liked the way it felt knowing that I'd made an effort to make a cake and a lot of love had gone into it as opposed to just buying one because that's what I did last year I just bought a cake for everyone's birthdays except Avery's obviously it was a very special occasion so long story short my goal is to bake a cake for family members birthdays this year all I've put in the kind of uh, achievement plan on this goal is to make note of everyone's birthdays which I have already done and pre-plan make sure ingredients are in etc so hopefully I can stick to that one my next kind of goal for myself is to try and hit 5,000 subscribers on YouTube I feel like I could have stretched myself a little bit further on that because I think we're at 3,000 something now which is amazing we had another little jump towards the end of the year and i'm so so grateful to all of you guys and i like the community that we're building and a lot of you have told me that my videos have really been helping you so if i can try and expand my reach to more people i know that my videos could be helping more people and i can build a bigger community and get to know more people and so on and so forth 
The achievement plan that I've put for this is create and publish two videos a week, which is what I have been doing. Continue to connect with followers, make more shorts, and promote videos on Instagram and blog. Now, I dropped off the wagon a little bit when it comes to promoting my videos. Um, I used to do it religiously. I would be um, posting blog posts at least twice a month, and I was trying to post at least three times a week on Instagram, but with moving and with Christmas and everything else, I have dropped off the wagon a little bit. Again, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself here because I know that 2023 is going to be a busy year. Avery is turning two, so I've got a big feeling that therapies are going to amp up and just appointments are going to get more frequent. And then we're going to Orlando in April and we're moving. And I just feel like it's going to be a busy year anyway. So I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. The main priority is to make sure I'm getting uh, a couple of videos out for you guys a week, minus maybe a few weeks of the year where I need to take some time off. Um, I like when we're in Florida for two weeks, for example. That That is a goal. I would like to have more of an audience base, I suppose. So there is more people to connect with because that's really the best bit so shameless plug here since we're on the topic if you haven't already subscribed then hit the subscribe button now and follow us along on our journey my next goal is have an epic trip to orlando yes i did put this as a goal because i have a tendency to really get in my own head and picture this scenario and then be disappointed when things don't turn out exactly how i'd imagine them so what i've actually put here is remember the boys are excited, allow them to be a little hyper because <laughs> sometimes children, especially when it's busy around, you can really be on edge if they get a little bit too excited and jumpy. I don't wanna take that away from them. I don't wanna make them feel like they can't be excited because they're not behaving. I want to allow them to be a little bit hyper and excited. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing them like that, to be honest. Have everything in place for Avery in terms of like medical and feeding. Um, Pre-register for DAS, which is um, Disney World's Disability Access Service. Um, that will definitely make our trip easier. Or well, to be honest, Disney World just wouldn't be possible without that, to be honest, just because of Avery's medical needs. There is absolutely no way we could stand in a queue for two hours. Expect chaos and allow for it. Try not to get stressed and overwhelmed. And then I've put be present. I've put in brackets, and this is something I've not mentioned yet, but I'll mention it now. I've put in brackets, don't take camera. I do not intend to take my vlogging camera to Orlando. And the main reason for that is I really want to allow myself to be present. This is most likely gonna be a once in a lifetime trip. It is a massive deal to our family. We have been planning it for such a long time. We've been so very excited for it. and. I don't want to miss out on anything. I don't want to miss the excitement on the boys' faces. I don't want to miss any of Avery's first experiences or the boys' first experiences because I am too focused on the shot I'm getting. Um, I do still intend or plan to take some short form content. So I will obviously film on my phone because I'm gonna want videos, I'm gonna want memories. So I will try and collate those into some um, short, short form videos and then maybe put them on Instagram as reels or on YouTube as shorts. So you will still see parts of our trip, but there just won't be a huge kind of dedicated vlog while we're out there. And then when we're back, I plan to kind of do a video all about what it was like, and then I can include any footage that I got. Um, Josh is planning to take his GoPro, so I know he will have some footage that I can use. So there will be footage. I just won't be physically vlogging while we're in Orlando. I really want to allow myself to be present and enjoy it with the kids, enjoy it as a family because, oh, she's gone. <laughs> that That is the whole reason we're doing it. It is to have a family trip that I feel like, without sounding conceited, we all really deserve after the last couple of years. Also, we did actually book this trip and we planned this trip before I even started YouTube, so I just feel like it would be unfair to everyone if I took myself away to vlog and I was talking to a camera instead of talking to my children. So I know you will all understand, you are just the most sweetest and incredible people ever, but I can't help but feel bad about it, but I know it is what my family are gonna need from me. There's only one non-Avery related goal left for me, and that is to address trauma and PTSD. 
this i feel like i probably should have said first because it is the most important one but i've put speak with a therapist and explore coping mechanisms allow myself to be sad sometimes and remember how far avery has come and even reading that out loud kind of chokes me up because i am still very much affected by avery's event and sometimes i'm fine sometimes i go days and days without it even crossing my mind but then now and again i'll just get flat flashbacks or just the realization of everything that's happened will hit me at once and i know that i need to address that i need to speak to someone i am in the process um if you guys have watched my channel for a while um little harbour the um the children's hospice that we are kind of connected with they do have um therapists there and i have reached out to them i'm just waiting for them to get back to me obviously christmas has happened so i know it takes a little bit of time for things to kick in but that is definitely a priority for this year um i, I mean i don't think i'm ever going to be able to just take the negative feelings away i don't think that's realistic but i feel like i could maybe learn some better co coping mechanisms that might help so moving on to the goals that i've got written down that are related to Avery. The first one is for Avery to communicate some needs and my plan for that is to continue to encourage noises because you guys know she makes a lot of noises, um, mimic her noises and that kind of confirms to her that what she's doing is good. Um, read to Avery and continue to talk to her, learn Makatan and implement, repeat short phrases for actions, for example, more all done up hungry etc so my plan is and it's not just me it's a plan for the whole family because josh is really keen on this idea as well is to learn makaton and then to start implementing it and you know talk with the makaton it's just another way for avery to visualize certain phrases and then recognize what they mean um because of the kind of lack of movement in her arms i'm not sure how well she will be able to um do it herself or learn it herself but even if she can we um arrange some kind of plan so that um it's kind of available the next time it goes uh, uh were you able to order the levetiracetam sorry guys that was the pharmacy they can't get another bottle of the levodopa so they're going to have to have it made up so we're going to be stopping the levodopa until we get this sorted like i said before though it shouldn't really cause avery any side effects so it is what it is but anyway i completely lost where i was but um basically if we can get to the end of the year where avery understands what we're communicating with her amazing if she can communicate with us in some way even better because going off the judgment that there's a possibility that she may be non-verbal i would really like to start exploring alternative communication methods now so that she's got the longer t longer time to learn it and us too because learning makaton will be completely new for us as well my next goal is to have avery in her standard five days a week for one hour now that technically this isn't my goal this is a goal that has been set for us by avery's physio that is the aim with the standard is eventually she will be in it for five days a week an hour at a time. My achievement plan for this is continue to put Avery in standard every day, try to make it a positive experience, increase time slightly as often as Avery will allow, end when Avery becomes distressed and that's just so that we don't turn it into a negative experience and then she doesn't look forward to the standard at all. Have I been good at doing that so far this year? No. Yesterday I didn't put her in her standard at all because she was upset and unsettled and I could barely put her down as it, as it is. So like I said, I don't want to make it a negative experience. So I'm not going to try it if she's already in a bad mood. Today, I'm not going to lie, I haven't put her in a standard either. But tomorrow she does have portage and occup occupational therapy. So I imagine she will be going in it then. Um, again, giving myself a little bit of grace because we are moving we're in the midst of packing i'm sure things will settle down once we've moved and then i can get on track for that goal but for now i need to not put too much pressure on myself because i will end up burning myself out because we've got less than two weeks till we move and i've still got a lot of stuff to do i think i've said that a million times but anyway can you guys hear us snoring <laughs> lean her back a little bit so that she can breathe a bit easier um oh now you guys can't see me there we go uh where are we okay 
next goal for Avery to be able to play independently and by play independently I don't mean she can you know sit up and play with toys on her own and stuff what I mean is she's kind of able to self-soothe I suppose so she doesn't necessarily need the TV or heavy adult interaction to be happy she can kind of find a way to occupy herself um, so for example a lot of babies will play with their hands or, or with toys or with their feet and that's a way of them self-soothing and keeping themselves occupied so it would be very nice if Avery could do that because I don't love the fact that the TV is the only thing that keeps her happy um, but my achievement plan is to continue to teach and encourage reaching and batting, find enjoyable positioning and continue to find sensory toys that Avery enjoys dystonia management and encourage hands to mouth. So I think that's a good kind of range of actions, I suppose. Um, dystonia management, obviously we are kind of going through that when we eventually get the medicine to try and then if that one doesn't work, there's still another one we can try. Um, and then everything else, it's kind of things that I've already been doing but I just want to continue doing them. It's got to stick at some point. <laughs> and, um, oh, last one. Okay, for Avery, like, this is a, this is one that might shock some of you. For Avery to start a nursery setting. And my achievement plan is ensure we are happy with EHCP, research preschools, arrange visits, and decide on one we are happy with, get to know one-to-one, -one, and lots of settling in sessions. Yes, Avery will be going to a preschool, and I have my reasons. Now, if I was being selfish, I would keep Avery all to myself. I'm pretty sure my husband would prefer that too, for her to stay at home all the time. But from my experience, especially with Zach, um, if you don't know, Zach is my eldest son. He's nine now, but he has autism and his additional needs were actually picked up when he started preschool. When he started preschool, I guess it's just from interaction with other children and a different setting and different learning mechanisms. He came on leaps and bounds. He thrived in preschool and I want to give Avery that chance as well. And in the same sense, if Avery was neurotypical, she would go to a preschool for the social element of it and just for the play and the enjoyment. and. Just because she's disabled, I don't want to take that experience away from her. I would rather she start earlier than later because I feel like it gives me more time to really take it at my own pace. Um, maybe even if it's just, you know, a couple of hours a week to start with. But we have already sent off Avery's EHCP assessment that is currently in review. We should hear back in the next few months about that. Um, Josh and I have said that we are only going to be comfortable letting Avery go to a setting if she has a one-to-one -one at all times and if the one-to-one -one is fully trained in, you know, feeding Avery, handling Avery, um, getting to know her as well because Avery is a very particular child. We would want to be 100% comfortable that Avery is comfortable and whoever is looking after her is comfortable but I want her to be able to interact with other children. I feel like sometimes children learn the most from other children. And here, yes, yeah, she's got Zach and Eli, but they are much older than her. So she really doesn't have anyone else around her age who can be teaching her the things that she could be doing. So I feel like it will be a good thing. Now, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Like I said, there's still a few more months until we get the EHCP back and then we have to research preschools and then we have to visit them, see if we like them. And then a one-to-one -one needs to be trained, etc., etc. There's also the issue of preschools having the um, capacity and being equipped for a child like Avery. Um, she will be going to a mainstream preschool and that is because um, we do have, um, I don't want to call them special schools because that's not, that's not really what they are. We do have schools for children with additional needs um, but there's only a couple and they are very limited for space for children under the age of school age basically apparently they do um they do take children that are two and above but it's very rare so i'm not um sorry that's her feeding machine again i'm not putting my hopes on that i'm just gonna go into it with the um, expectation that she will be going into a mainstream preschool 
with a one-to-one -one, but her EHCP is also important so that we can start getting her name known to the um the schools because again just because Avery has complex medical needs does not automatically give her a place in one of these schools we will have to fight for her position and for me in terms of main like actual school I don't think a a normal school will cut it for Avery she's just got too many medical needs and I know in in the schools that cater for children like Avery they have the equipment they have the therapists Avery will get everything that she needs in the school in terms of her therapy and the things she should be doing each day to help her development and then that way home time can be home time we can just be Avery's parents instead of being her therapists as well which I know it's a ways off yet, but I am really, really looking to that point, looking forward to that point. I'm not looking forward to being away from Avery for, I don't know if it's five days a week for these schools or not, but for for argument's sake, I am not looking forward to being away for, from Avery for that long, but I am looking forward to having the pressure of the therapist hat taken off and just getting to be Avery's mum, because I feel like that is probably the hardest balance that you need to find when you are a special needs parent is that balance between you know being a therapist and wanting to do right by your child in terms of their development but also just wanting to be a parent and enjoying them the way a parent is supposed to enjoy their child i you know there are days that i go where we don't do any therapies at all we we literally do nothing and as a matter of fact we've probably gone up to a week like that and even though I shouldn't feel guilty because you know I'm doing what any other parent would do I am riddled with guilt because I know that these therapies are the things that are going to be able to like push her into doing things like walking and talking and eating and it's a really really hard one anyway those are my eight goals for 2023. I feel like sharing them with you guys kind of will hold me accountable for them. So definitely remind me throughout the year if you've noticed that I just don't seem to be sticking to any of my goals. If I get to, I don't know, Avery or Zach's birthday and you notice that I haven't made them a cake, please do call me out on it. Make me feel guilty because I want to stick to these goals. Anyway, with that said, Thank you for just listening to me ramble for the last god knows how long. If you've made it this far, then I salute you. But with that said, I will see you guys in a few days with another video. Bye guys.